Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Black Geyser with me, Bring It Down. I'm listening at New once. the Market Street. Can I help you? Our Lord's blessings be upon you, fellow faithful. Not considered stealing. At once. At once. I await your instructions. I'm listening. Sorry, you can keep your old damp robe. <laughs> Weird. These uh, bookshelves aren't highlighting. I hold tab. They can be looted. At once. All right. Where to next? At once. Oh, we'll go right here. Gentlemen, I merely wish to be on my way. I have no quarrel with you. Hmm. What's going on here? Please, I have nothing left I can give to your master. Now that is not so, Soraka. You know it is not so. The one thing you indisputably have is that which we've come for. Then why talk at all? Why not just plant a blade in my back? Because I want to see the fear in your eyes before you die. Leave that woman alone. Walk away, human. We're only after her. You really, really stoop so low as to harass their own kind for coin. We have business with this one, human. We intend to get paid. Take your leave, it will get paid too, in a different sort of coin. Young lady. You have some business with these men. Call me Soraka, please. Unfortunately, yes, business of a kind. They're here on behalf of their master, Elinuator. I wonder if I'm supposed to intentionally mispronounce his name here. This Elminator seems like a disagreeable man. I bet he smells like sulfur and is, to be frank, quite ugly. How... How dare you defile the holy name of our lord? I should have your head for this. I don't know for certain that we would win in a straight fight, but I imagine the amount of noise we can raise together will rouse a score or two of other folk from their bread and ale. You care so little who witnesses your crimes. Darn your interfering. Very well. Breathe the fresh air a while longer, Soraka. But to your new friends, I say this. Any associate of this heretic will be marked just the same. Run like the cowards you are. Uh, you handled yourself well. As did you. I'd rather not dwell on the outcomes should you not have... Anyway, you have my thanks. I'm a cleric of Honorius. Adept at the healing arts, and also capable in a fight. Perhaps our skills might complement each other. Uh, yes, agreed. Welcome to the party. Thank you. Let me know if you need any healing. Yes. Uh, so she is a real old cleric. Now 
keep on brewing and drying as well. Alright, so her class skills, which differ from my main character in Helgen Hars, which is theology, to enables additional dialogue choices themed around faith. The skill is inactive until the skill point is invested into it. The charisma, focus, and theology all boost it. Nintendo Wounds offers the ability to heal party members' injuries during a rest. The skill increases the base amount of health regained by all group members during resting at all locations. Multiple characters can take this skill to increase its effects. The skill is inactive until a skill point is invested into it. Focus, Intelligence, and Tendon Wounds all boosted. And then Prey. Prey lets the cleric talk to their deity Aldarius, the King God. The skill will impart one of various boons to the user when selected before resting. However, it is up to Aldarius to decide the exact nature of it. The skill is inactive until a skill point is invested into it. Then Abolish Curses. Offers the ability to purify magical items that are otherwise cursed. While cursed items offer some negative effects in turn for the powerful advantages they give, purified items will only add positive effects to their wearers. So I think I'm going to focus on that first. Just in case we come across anything that's cursed that I want to use. And then weapons. I feel like rods and staves are more thematic, but we might get another companion soon that'll use rods and staves, so I might have her use small blades. I'm on the fence about that. Eh, we'll see. I think it'll be fine. Go ahead. Alright, so we have the same level 1 spells as my main character. Level 2 spells, we have Calm. By channeling their own concentrated spiritual energy into the target. The caster can strengthen their mental posture and restore their spirits. Removes panic from the target. And chattering. It can be hard to stay on target when all the warmth seems to leave the world. The spell causes intense shivering that disrupts physical activities. Inflicts silence and distraction to the target. Then Glare of the Djinn. The spell summons the mind-numbing force of a djinn's eyes to hinder the caster's target. Inflicts stunned on the, to the target. And Mystic Bulwark. The spell focuses a field of divine energy to surround its target, shifting them from harm while the spell is active. Attacks made against the target are absorbed by the shield, until it's overpowered or the effect ends. Grant shielded to the target. It was done first. I await your instructions. What next? But I guess if she's gonna go small blades and I get her a shield as well. I'm listening, off I go.
at once. I would like this necklace. But there's probably not a way to steal it without being caught. Run away! <laughs> we get two chances, so we'll squander the first one for the necklace. My prayer beads. A simple set of beads worn around the neck, used to help organize one's thoughts and communicate more clearly with their deity. The jewels are believed to amplify prayers, so that hopefully they get a better chance of being heard. It grants three base spell slots, level one. Glad I picked that up. I could use it on my main character if I wanted, or on Soraka. I at once. Let me open my spell book. Yes. Oh, because I thought party slot. I'm listening. All right, more sustain. Off I go. I await your instructions. I'm listening. I know there's not a witness down here, but I'm trying not to impact the greed too much. Hmm? You need only ask. I await your mm -hmm. instructions. I'll see if I can buy a cauldron. You need only ask. During the day. Of course, I can't resist stealing magic items, but. Mundane stuff I'll I'll hold off on and purchase if necessary. Alright, the Alchemist Gloves. The plus ten percent to cold, heat, poison and acid, pulse and blow, stabbing, and slashing resistance, plus one to dexterity, and plus fifteen percent to brewing and drying. Yes. I await your instructions. All right, since it is night, I'm going to go to the tavern and rest. At so once. all the shops are open as we explore. Bronca. Think her so long. Really great Biala must have better things to do than skulk around a tavern. You know the nobles in there must be fawning all over her. When do you take your time if you were in her slippers? Please. Biala is nothing but an upstart student, than a usually large portion of luck. Anyway, noble blood doesn't automatically grant a person noble taste. If they had any taste at all, they'd be slobbering over the real prize out here on the Oh, steal your tongue, will you? Or I'll cast chattering. Sorry. I'm still baffled that Lord Tripe would ever fall for that tramp. Right, perhaps. But Lord Fiffin, unbelievable. I await your instructions. Greetings. Uh, hello. Sorry if I'm preoccupied. These two birds are so fickle. I just can't figure out what I must do to make them notice me. Yes? I'm not in the mood to talk right now. Can I help you? What Rothgore's hells do you want? I don't know you. Who is this Lady Biala you're chattering about? Why is everyone so obsessed with her? I cannot bear it. There's no hope when even strangers from the hinterlands are asking after her. Biala is a wizard who got famous for getting kicked out of Warden Haft Academy. Supposedly, she's more talented even than her teachers, but an unruly nature was too much, so they threw her out. 
that she found that stupid diadem, and Mattis has ruled ever since. Everyone thinks she's some kind of magical demigoddess. People seem to get recognized these days for the most ludicrous things. There's surely nothing about her that's superior to any other student of Wardenhaft. The soul bizarre mystique surrounding her just rose up out of nothing. Where's Lady Biala now? She's right inside the Crooked Hagler there. Uh, go on and join the swarm, if that's your thing. Care if we don't get crushed by her admirers. I'm the son and heir of Lord Espen. I'm tracking down information about the raid on his estate. Best do your tracking elsewhere then. I know of no Espen, Lord, Lady or Boot Black. Now please excuse my friend's wretched manners. He's very upset right now. Well, that's all I wanted to talk about. I'll be off. Yes, you should be. I'm listening. Off I go. <laughs> I think I want poor more of the thin and the other one. Okay. What? Yeah? Uh, which way to the market? Alright. It's already started. I'm going to clear out all this dialogue. More rations would be nice. We shall crush the rebellion. What? I hate patrol. Alright, into the Crooked Haggler. At once. Not what I wanted, where's it at? So I don't think my greed went up. I'm pretty sure when I loaded in, it said I had 105. And sealing those two items didn't seem to I affect await it. Your instructions. Off I go. I'm listening. I'm listening. There? Let's talk to Carmino first. Yes. Now take a seat. What can I get you today? What can you tell me about this place? Ah, you must be new here, surely. This is the Crooked Haggler. Finest inn you can find in Isselbright. The meat is cold, the beds are soft, patrons... Well, the patrons are a bit more rich, a bit more stuck up, and a bit less likely to stab you in the chest than the other places. We'll rent a room later. Alright, same thing the drunkard outside said. Lord Smedrick. If any were to ask, I'd compare Lady Biala's exquisite presence to the light of dawn. Ah, I would never compare Lady Biala's lovely visage to anything so harsh as that. I think the reflection of moonlight on a still pond is more apt. My lords are too kind, but you know, I'm finding it a titch stuffy in here. I believe I will step out for some air. Let me fan you, milady. I do carry a fan for such occasions. Mine is fashioned from pheasant. Bah. Dirty wild creatures are pheasants. My fan is fashioned from peacock feathers. Step aside, poppers. My fan is crafted from the feathers of the legendary phoenix. In summer it cools thee, and in winter, warms. Really, my lords, I have a needlepoint back at my apartments that I'm most eager to complete. If you'll excuse me. Nonsense, Lady Biala. I cannot go an hour longer without you choosing me over these two scoundrels. I cannot wait another minute until you select me over these two vagabonds. A second me, nincompoops. <laughs> what a spectacle these men make of themselves. A dwarf woman would know how to handle such a situation. A gentle rap on the temple with the backside of an axe. Let's see if we can help her out, Donald. Yes? Lord Smedrick, as much as your poetry is alarmingly metaphorical, I still must insist that you speak to no one regarding your thoughts on my resemblance to a flower bud ready to open.
Oh, so I can't call my companions. And I'm assuming I'm using Soraka's learning and research here. Uh, milady, my lords, I hate to interrupt, but I have urgent news. The king is about to make an announcement at the palace. Something about a new tax to be levied on the nobility in support of the war effort. You hurry. There's still time to hear him speak. You're not serious. I mean, now that Darren Gold, I have to go. As do I. As do I. That was neatly done. Who do I have to thank for my rescue? I am Donald. Glad to be of service. I am the Lady Biola of the Feldegug, darling of the court and spellweaver extraordinaire. But of course, you know all that. I can't say that I do. You honestly don't know me. How delightful. I'm so tired of the endless legions of fawning earls and viscounts and hangers-on. One can hardly walk down the street here without tripping over them. If you don't know me, you must be new to Isselbright. How doubly delightful. Well, I am very pleased to meet you. What brings you to the capital? I am the heir to Lord Espen, but this being my first visit to the capital, I have no idea what to do about it. Ah, what luck. The disposition of noble titles is practically a second career of mine. You must allow me to accompany you. I'll make sure you find what you wish to know, and thereby repay the good turn you've done me, disposing of those well-bred parasites. A splendid. I do need the help. Good. I suggest we try the palace first, or the Hall of Records. Yes. Alright, so she is a Feldegug Spellweaver. And we'll have her focus on learning and research. Then her class skills are Prodigy. Enables additional dialogue choices themed around wizardry. The skill is inactive. Well, okay, I don't need to read that last sentence over and over again. Uh, Charisma, Focus, and Prodigy all affect it. Arcane Studies. Enhances aptitude for elevated energy level spells, with increasing available casting slots for such spells, as well as decreasing the time needed to rest between casting them. Cooldown between elevated energy spe level spells is decreased by up to 50%. And Magical Perception. Offers the ability to actively sense and disable hidden traps in the world. Traps sense and disarm using the Magical Perception skill must be at least of magical nature. Uh, sensing traps is easier than disarming them. And then focus, intelligence, and magical perception. I forgot to read these. Uh, focus, intelligence, and arcane studies. A magical warding. Offers the ability to erect a barrier of arcane force around camp when resting at outdoor locations. Uh, such a barrier will discourage wandering beasts and bandits from approaching the camp, increasing the chance for the group to be attacked during their rest. Decreases the chance for an ambush and the minimum distance needed from hostile creatures to rest by up to 50%. Focus, intelligence, and magic awarding. All affected. And rods and staves. Perfect. Yes, I was able to make that. Small blade call with Soraka. Because I knew we were going to get her. And I thought I remembered she used staves. I mean, she's a spell weaver, so it's a safe assumption. Uh, we also have this I think we can give her. Oops, that's yes. the wrong character. I'm always ready. And it's the same thing. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. What do you need? Alright, we'll give all this stuff to Sraka. Yeah, I'm trying to set it up so that I don't have any conflicts with equipment in my party. Go ahead. I'm not sure if meat is used. I'll give that back to Helgen Har. And give this to my main character to sell. What do you wish of me? You need only ask. Whatever you say. What next? Alright, see about drying. We should have one candle.
Am I not doing it right? I'm pretty sure we failed every single time. Let's get mundane powder. Unless the only supposed to get mundane powder. I know we'll figure out crafting as we go. I will lead. I'm listening. That's right. I haven't been saving our formation. <laughs> Okay, try that again. As you say. I await there. There we go. Okay. I haven't talked to a noble woman yet. Hurry it up, please. Yeah. Uh, the waiter. Welcome to the Crooked Haggler, sir. Talk to Carmina if you fancy a room or a drink. Let's go check out upstairs. Our party has doubled in size. At once. I await your instructions. I'm listening. Off I go. Hmm? You need only ask. Yes. Yes. There? Go ahead. I'm listening. I will lead. Interesting that I'm my party yet. Maybe after I rest, they'll show up there. Uh, there was. I forget where it's at. Oh, there they are. Get open and close it out of it to have it show up again. You need only ask. I forgot how to command company. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. You need to select it before you rest. I await your instructions. I'm listening. Oh, here it is. So I think hit and run is probably still the best option starting out. Phalanx! I guess three of my party members will be using shields for right now. And the attack speed is really solid. I think I'll just stay on hit and run for now. Once. Let's rent a room. Can I help you? I like to rent a room. Sure. Which one do you like? I don't think I need a guard. I select a different room.
at once. Uh, be nice to other people in the world. Th things will go your way. I like a bully and a cur. Something, something. Oh yeah, that's smart is what that is. And after my seventh ale, I get into what I call the zone thinking zone. So like a good person, you get rewarded. I wasn't trying to read it out loud. This, I have no problem reading that. So I don't think the pacing's too bad. General store. All right, I'm going to call the episode here. In the next one, we'll explore the general store and continue through the market street. And see if we can't find more companions. We found two. Kind of blitzing through it, so. But for now, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.